firepower or horsepower, manpower, whatever you want to call it, to do scouting for them against LMQ. And they banned three mid layers. You have to focus, Shao Wei Shao. It's too much strength. It's an interesting quote, too, from, from Crumbs or from the team to say that their solo lanes would be stronger when that's almost what LMQ is known for, yeah. having extremely strong lanes. It's one of their big calling cards. Shao Wei Shao was the top mid lane performer in Fantasy LCS last week. Obviously put up some great numbers in the 4 record as well. Ackerman played Shivana four times, actually. He's the yep. only LCS player to play the same champion in every one of his games in North America here. And he would have a potential to lock it in again here with Lulu first pick. We just saw EG run that exact same solo lane combo. Shivana and Lulu have fantastic synergy together. And we usually see Ackerman on the big guys, but that could also be a top lane Lulu. We saw Dyrus on be. that today. LMQ always using the tricks from the start. Looks yeah. like Lucian gets another quick pickup on the day. Third game, he's going to be second pickup. And yeah. they lease, as no, said. No big surprises there from Dignitas. I mean, Cutie Pie's been playing Lucian ever since the spring split when he was actually losing on it a lot. Uh, but he's continued with it. And I actually was watching Crumbs' stream yesterday. He was duo queuing with Zion Spartan, and he said uh, he needs practice on Elise because she's OP and he's playing LCS tomorrow. Yeah. So he actually lost that game, but he's picking Elise once again. I think he did some good practice strong. last night. <laughs> yeah. 30 minute queue time when they were duo queuing. That's what you do, right? You study right before the test, so you remember everything. It's right yeah, there. Absolutely. Top warm, of your mind. Warm it up. Looks like we could have another Kha'Zix coming in two games in a row, possibly. The Shivana is there. They don't have the yeah. top laner, and Dignitas would most likely be picking that up here to leave mid lane in for Shifter on that last pick. So the Shao Wei Shao locks into Shivana for Ackerman. He's going to be just continuously playing on that. He's got a whole closet full of Shivanas. Yeah. That's all he wears. Five for five. Yep. I like that right there, because it also hamstrings Zion Spartan's picks a little bit. Uh, even though he does have a big yeah. champion pool, of the tanks, Zion Spartan definitely trends towards Shivana if he has to play one. Uh, his next best would obviously be Jax, which is what he would typically pick against Shivana, but that was LMQ's first ban. So LMQ's choice there, you saw them toggling between Leona and Shivana. Uh, much smarter to actually lock in Shivana right there to deny it from Zan Spartan. Interesting LMQ. Wow. Bans out. I was yeah. going to say the Morgana, but Zion Spartan picks up Aurelia. This is something actually Seraph was playing a few times last week. Yeah, we haven't seen too much successful Aurelia. Right, so has tried it too. Yeah, in the North American or European LCS, it's shown a little bit of success over in Korea. It's kind of coming back as far as the game nowadays is, but it's still not, it doesn't bring the same team fight presence as a Shivana. Because I was Spartan would either look to win with split pushing uh, or in 1v1s, with that being the case. Look at the things that LMQ gets away with. You're so scared of the mid lane that Twitch passes all the way through. I haven't seen him once today. One of the most picked AD carries gets in the hands of Basili. That's dangerous. I mean, that speaks a little bit to I'm a Cutie Pie's preferences more than anything else. That's true. I think picking that Lucian that much before everything else. And I also really like how that last pick from Shifter, uh, knowing the matchup against Shao Shao is so dependent on the lane, picks probably the best farming champion you can in mid lane for League of Legends. <laughs> to try and keep that in check, make sure Shao Shao can't shove up the mid lane, and then instead of roaming necessarily, Shifter can just throw alts down to the side lanes if he yep. really needs it. It's kind of like that Zix pick is the string on his finger. Remember to keep farming. There it is. All the things yeah. locked in now. A lot of zone support coming in here from Kiwi Kid. Goes back to some Zyra pickups. So as a lover of the initiations on Annie, but Kiwi Kid can kind of throw anything in its support. Yeah, and I also think Kiwi Kid's made huge strides in support when he, uh, since he moved that role at the start of the 2014 season. Right. And I also feel like Zyra is an incredibly good pick just against LMQ in general. They're such a dive-heavy team, and back when Zyra was a huge pick, it was as that counter-initiation, you use it when they dive on top of you to mess everything up. Great pick there for Kiwi Kid. Very good job in the champion select. But now that the champs are locked in, let's tabulate the votes over at LOLEsports.com. And with 64% of the vote, you're tipping this one in LMQ's favor. But you can update your vote through the game by tweeting the hashtags LMQWin or DigWin to at LOLEsports. Yeah, the last remaining undefeated team in either LCS, actually. Mm -hmm. Europe did not have a team go perfect in Super Week, whereas North America absolutely did. Uh, with LMQ, a win here for Dignitas as well would tie them for first place in the LCS. It would actually give them possession because they would technically hold the tiebreaker right. over LMQ. So a lot on the line here. 
As Dignitas cannot overlook or underestimate LMQ. The one thing Dig is running with 110% is their changes have to be the best coming in here. Seeing Shifter and Zion in the mid lane, they're able to take down Cloud9. They did have that loss to Curse, but flukes happen, things go down. Teams will win, teams will lose. We'll see if they can put that cooperation back together against LMQ, who we forget they have not had the roster changes that everybody yeah. else has had. So they're coming in pretty fresh. And we've seen some very varying results in roster changes. I still want to kind of call back to the start of the day, that COG TSM game. Wherever there were roster changes in that game, uh, they actually kind of struggled to the slightly more experienced teams. There was huge miscommunication at the start, start of the game uh, between Dexter when they dove for that double kill, and even Glebe had a bad game. This one, though, uh, LMQ's been together for longer than Dignitas, technically speaking, and this might show in their early game coordination. <laughs> Gets five gold. Kiwi Kid making money. Looks like he'll push Vasily out all the way. So for now, they have the 80 carry on the bottom side. I don't know, Cutie Pie loves to fight with Kiwi Kid against his opponent, so if they can get that 2v2 matchup, more than happy. 66 to 34. LMQ on the top of the list, but not the top of the vote. Mm. You also have to be very careful against a Leona Twitch. Uh, a synergy that kind of used to exist that people forget about a little bit is the fact that Twitch's passive will proc Leona's passive uh, at will. So even if Leona uses very quick succession of abilities, you'll always be proccing that sunlight passive for extra damage from the Twitch-Leona combo, meaning their all-in potential when they catch a single target out is extremely high. And Zyra is an incredibly squishy support. So if we actually do see a 2v2 lane, there is a ton of kill pressure on LMQ's side, which would actually mean I don't think we're going to see 2v2s in this game. A lot of wards placed deep into the jungle are going to have to tip off LMQ. They'll this is a really they good timely invade. Wow. They're going to oh, be able no. to hold this bush. Oh my god, no name. How about no HP? That was instant. Two minutes in, first blood, and a red buff for Crows. Listen, Riv, we talked about the scouting potential of Dignitas and how much preparation they could put into this LMQ team and whether or not LMQ was showing any patterns. That very well could have been a pattern. No Name also panicked with that flash. That really shows they had no idea that that would be a potential invade. Dignitas challenges their convention right there, gets the first kill, and gives Crumbs a big edge in the early jungle. Also see Shifter in the mid lane getting some good damage on Xiao Wei Xiao there. Let's see if he can start to push in. Someone who could really cripple him in CS throughout the game. Everybody trying to go very hard. No Name all by himself on the blue buff. We've seen Subi doing the likes of this down to about 5 HP, and then he lived. But yeah. still, the smite for No Name, he's going to be able to use it. But will he be able to really get any help here? If Ackerman is to go with him, he's even farther behind. So they're going to have to split. Good thing he's Shivana. Yeah, that's going to be a big farming adventure. And this is the kind of new conventional lanes we're seeing. Mm -hmm. In competitive league, the 2v0, with many roamers, there are a ton of strategic possibilities with this because the only people really constrained to lanes is the AD carry in the mid laners. The supports are free to roam, the junglers are free to roam, and the top laners are free to roam. So, division control becomes even more of a priority. And I feel like a lot of green wards are going to be placed this game to try and keep track of LMQ, a team that has typically been roaming better than all the other teams in the LCS. More coming down for a little support on the red. Shifter nicely winning this lane in HP. Forcing the whimsy out of Xiao Wei Xiao. Probably wishing that he took a, a flask at this point. Shifter is just hitting him with every passive auto attack that he can with that extra damage. Yeah, that mid lane is pretty much bang even at about four minutes because there's extra three minions on the side of Shifter that he'll be able to hopefully clean up, clean up after this one. We have to track the CS edge of Shao Shao and whether he can pressure Shifter out because especially with the first blood advantage, that mid lane matchup increases greatly in importance. LMQ buddy system in the jungle as they buddy jungle away. Cutie Pie is going to allow this to just flow into the turret. So with that happening, 25 to 22 on the AD carries as they have themselves a grand old time free farming. And LMQ here to do a little bit of team soak up on the experience in the bot lane. So just Free flowing everywhere. A little bit of a rotation here to mid lane on to Xiao Xiao. Yeah, Crumbs coming in the mid lane as well. Might catch Xiao Xiao. Very least he burns a flash. There's the flash. The cocoon. He flashes in though to make sure the Q would follow up. They're able to repel a turret shot into Zion Spartan. Huge and great roam 
And Riv, this actually all started because of Dignitas's ward control. The ward at the very bottom in the map between those two LMQ turrets told Crumbs exactly where the roamers of LMQ were, which meant he could fearlessly flash into that turret right here. The execution doesn't actually matter as much. Post-flash, he flashes in to guarantee the stun, and Zion just goes in after because they knew they were safe. It was all about the vision control for Dignitas. Beautiful job from Crumbs. Keeping vision up for the team the entire time. A pivotal way that they took down Cloud9 in a way they are using it now to take down LMQ. Yeah, and Riv, Crumbs as a jungler, especially throughout Super Week, mm -hmm. was so hyper paranoid with vision control. He actually individually bought more green wards than LMQ as a team. Yep. Which also makes me think, in this particular matchup, since we're getting the lanes that are more reliant on vision control and have more roamers, the way that Dignitas was playing during Super Week just blends brilliantly with this style of play. And LMQ is a little bit undermanned because they just typically don't buy as many wards based right. on the strength of their solo lanes. You can already see right now a pink and a green in the hand of Crumbs, ready to put them down, as well as Zion Spartan with one of his own visions. And Crumbs was quick to that sweeper, just like no name, so they can keep these invades coming. Possibly more kills on Shao Wei Shao. Shifters staying even for now. Crumbs now to the bottom lane as he sets that pink down. Looks like they're going to try to start controlling that bottom of the map as Dragon Time is going to be soon. I think the more important thing about this lane mm -hmm. uh, isn't that Shifter has 80 or 90 CS at 10. It's that Shao Wei Shao doesn't. As long as they can keep Shao Wei Shao's gold starved, we know that Dignitas has yeah. practice winning uh, with Shifter at lower CS numbers because he's so good at roaming in team fights. Where the same is yet to be true about Xiao Zhao. Most of his farm generally comes from the lane, and he will transition that gold value into the team fights by just being that much stronger than opponents. As long as it's close like this, big advantage Shifter. Definitely a player to give that advantage to. Shifter is somebody that can carry a team. We've seen even when Coast was having hard times last split, he could still come up with quadros and triple kills. And it was actually on that sixth play that he had. Zion Spartan and Ackerman get to meet up in the top lane with Zion being level five. He's got a little bit of the upper hand in that true damage. Yeah, this will be a very tricky matchup for Ackerman. He had a lot of success in Super Recon Shivana, specifically after falling behind. Their game against CLG when he was against Seraph, and Seraph was very good on Jax. Ackerman still became the stronger one behind. eventually, but for now, he's got to be playing a little bit of catch up. So there's Crumbs. The vision paranoia coming into play again. He's more, rightfully so, rather, to do that because it's helping him win. Yeah, and a very early sight stone as well as Sweeper on Kiwi Kids, so they're very heavily trying to deny the vision of LMQ to maybe make them play a little bit more cautiously. Yeah. LMQ is not typically a team that plays cautiously. Zion Spartan, 75% the way to level six. There's Ackerman just getting himself as well up to par. So Zion could easily go for a dive here quite soon. He's alone in the top lane. He's got ward coverage as Shifter grabs his blue up. And Dignitas definitely putting up one of the best fights we've seen so far to the LMQ early game. Yeah, they're hitting level six, six break points a there little bit is. earlier as well. Can he land? Oh, oh over the shoulder. That was a no look. Woo. Rapidly firing that stuff uh -oh. up, and now Xiao Xiao is oh. pulling off some roam of his own. Eight seconds. Which brush? He's got to guess. Uh oh, door Where's number two. Door number two. No good. Oh no way! Oh. Wow, he got out alive. Would you believe it? <laughs> Man, the slick escape, and now the zigzag goes bottom. Does not hit anything. Oh, going clear wide on that one. More looks like he has to back up off of this, and the pressure around the map kind of sends LMQ into a flurry as Dick takes control. Yeah, maybe they can go for the Dragon here. Also, No Name gets caught on the top of the map. Things are very much going in Dignitas' favor right here. Taking a look at this fight, we missed bottom lane. They did catch Vasily in a route, but that was to the demise of Kiwi Kid. We talked about how squishy Zyra was in those yeah. all-in situations, and that was just a little bit too much. They got caught out baiting. Good quick focus, taking down the Kiwi Kid. There's the evolution coming in for the claws on No Name. Get uh, the skin on No Name. Yeah, making himself dark, getting that extra ultimate activation. And Zion going to continue to bully. That's a lot of creeps, though. He's going to oh back here. Run back. No name helping Xiao Wei Xiao. Four CS behind right now. Does not have the assist that Shifter has, so he's working well nice on that chalice. And he's still able to spit out the damage, not worrying about too much of what Xiao Wei Xiao can bring back to him. Dignitas' two pink wards on Dragon right now allow them all the roam they need if they want to go bottom lane. 
Dragon already yep. theirs, means they have control. And here's the thing we'll need to see about LMQ as they continually get uh, faced up in the NALCS is when they're ahead, we know this from Challenger, they are fantastic at closing leads because they think every play they're going to make will work. They have that type yeah. of confidence. When you fall behind, how are they going to continue their play? Are they going to continue to shoot and just go again and again into a team that is potentially stronger? It has worked for many teams in the past because if you're good enough at executing your plays, you can still pull off aggressive moves while behind. We haven't yet seen LMQ in this position in the North American LCS. They're down one and a half thousand gold early in the game, and they haven't actually been able to find windows. Yeah. That's the challenge they face in this game. Oh, a dive and Ackerman trying to save himself. Crumbs is there. The gap closes there. Can he the land turret the is, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The one, two, three, and the punch to end it. Zion Spartan picking himself up a kill there. And lo and behold, the solo lanes are winning. Yeah, nice efficiency from Crumbs, though. The solo lanes have generally benefited from what he's been doing. Zion right. had a lead on his own, yes. but that's the second flash stun Crumbs has done, which results in an immediate kill. Very good efficiency from his Elise. It will be theirs. Looks like they're not going to hesitate any bit on this. They're going hard. Yeah, but while Dignitas is going hard in that top lane, LMQ is setting up a big aggressive move in the bottom lane. But now the question is, how do they pull the trigger? Can Dignitas hold this one off 3v4? And is LMQ wasting time? I like this. We usually don't see teams try to react immediately. It takes a little bit of time to formulate. But like you said, deep wards being placed by LMQ. We still got a bit of a timer on Dragon. So it looks like they don't find anything on a bit of a roam there but they're still leaving that door open for the possibility. Crumbs and Zion Spartan not finding any pressure in the top lane, and with the ward to stay safe, they're happy to push this one out. Yeah, and speaking of wards, just look at the minimap right now. Uh, especially around the bottom lane side, because that's where Dignitas is getting caught, but Kiwi Kid gets hit out, he might Solar just die. Solar Flare, right, beautiful consecutive stack, the Wild Growth goes down, he's putting himself in the fight, he knows he's going down, so he's gonna oh, do it the GP. Here comes Zion Spartan, in range for the Blade Surge, he is, there's the flash, the follow flash, and the follow kill. Good guy, Zion, actually got stunned up, but it goes to Cutie Pie. Even though Kiwi falls, the counter initiation is there, and because Zion has such top lane supremacy over Ackerman, he can teleport completely unpunished. Another great counterplay right there by Dignitas. Oh, no. And another near miss by Shao. Another Chow. one, yep. It's just kind of the way the cookie's been crumbling so far. LMQ, instead of being a few minutes ahead, a few seconds behind in all these actions yep. that Dignitas is making. And that's just, like you said, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Every game of League of Legends is different, and Shao Shao has been a fraction away from picking up some really nice plays but especially in League of Legends the way gold leads get out of hand and when you miss a kill you get more gold against you you can't afford to miss those plays one after another this fight though Kiwi Kid gets cleaned into a solar flare but that's the danger when you all in Lucian support yeah. you have no shutdown on Lucian and his damage potential level 7 is pretty much higher than any other AD carry in the game so he gets to wreck the silly while they're focusing the support and then afterwards since it's a support versus an AD carry the top winner comes in and clean up helps CC yeah. and get a second kill for Amiki he still had crumbs pressuring in the top lane because he was just with Zion so yeah. LMQ couldn't even react to where the pressure was leaving at that point. Very good play so far by Dig. 14 minutes they're coming up on with one of the biggest leads I think we've had against LMQ coming into the LCS. Level 9 Zion Spartan says, here you go, take this for a second. Yeah, this is going to be a lot about transitioning for Zion Spartan as well because he had numerous top lane advantages when he was a member of Team Coast, which Team Coast could not translate into victory. Right. Now that Dignitas' team is stronger across the board, two kills in the bot lane, uh, greater farm by Shifter over Shao Wei Shao, which is huge in the mid lane. Yeah. Uh, Zion's roaming, three kills but only 68 CS. How will he balance his lane domination with transitioning help to the rest of his team? Right now, Dignitas is backing. It will be all right, at least on map pressure for the moment. Gonna get some more wards. Three pinks across the board. Just picked up two more sites. And I believe that site stone was already there. Just a crystal going into Cutie Pie's inventory so we can start up a little more damage with the phage. Six to two. Zion Spartan having a grand time in the top lane. Great pickups by Dignitas with Shifter and Zion Spartan. Really rounding out a team that kind of had some falters yeah. in closing or even like they like said, lanes, just lanes. Yeah, I mean, Zion did miss that CS though, so still <laughs> a lot of work to do. There's a player. Now, I, I completely agree. Uh, the amount of dual queue practice they've done with Crumbs already is yielding 
uh, many positive results. You can actually see Crumbs is seemingly ignoring his bottom lane and only ganking for the new guys. Mm -hmm. But it's working out pretty damn well for Dignitas as a team. That pink ward might be the death of somebody. <laughs> or at least he gets vision on Dragon. Dignitas, however, they're kind of setting this one up. They knew where the pieces would fall. Yeah. See, LMQ actually has not. okay vision around here, but they know they're much weaker, so do they try to go in? They're a little slow, and they get hit by Zyra. Oh. Teleport. Beautiful job. Like you said, Jat, with the aggression LMQ brings to the table, Lue can swap the strategy they use, and mostly being an all-in, the Zyra pickup has been huge for Dignitas. Yes. 5,000 gold lead. And we were talking about this three or four minutes ago, how LMQ has missed plays by fractions of a second. Xiaoi Xiao has been yeah. about a quarter of a second late on interrupting two recalls that probably could have given him kills. And that actually forfeited whatever advantage he may have had in the mid lane. Whenever he roams off, it gives Shifter on Ziggs a chance to instantly clear the wave, get six or seven uncontested CS, maybe more if he can get a second wave there. Mm -hmm. And this is really the first time uh, in LCS play that Xiaoi Xiao has been down in the mid lane. Especially to Shifter, who in previous games had been down to every other mid laner. It just goes to show you a much different focus right. by Shifter as far as game plan to specifically play against Xiaoi Xiao. And on Ziggs, something he knows he can keep the farm up with. Like we said, that string around his finger reminding him to keep that attention onto the CS. Just like Cutie Pie sees everything as a turret, which to his credit, if you look back at Super Week, I guess this would be to Vasily's credit, 29 kills for Vasily in Super Week. Cutie Pie yeah. had nine kills, but in this one, 2 0 1, it was a good thing they maybe didn't match up in those lanes. Yeah, Vasily had pretty much the best Super Week you could ever hope for. It was Nady Carey starting. Yeah. yeah, getting like seven kills per game. Not looking like he's going to be able to get them this game, but we cannot underestimate the team fight presence of this LMQ team composition. Right. Javon Alulu with the Twitch AoE, the reset potential from No Name's Kazakhs when he hits level 11, and the initiation power of more. If LMQ can catch a slightly sloppy Dignitas in certain situations, that 5,000 gold lead could actually not mean that much. You usually see, looking at more, kind of that Thresh pickup, that Morgana pickup, something that can lull you into a false sense of security. If you're going in with Leona, you know to disengage. Cutie Pie, going hard here. He's gonna get Ackerman to feel like he safes for a second. They wanna, they wanna fight this though. Yeah. Whoa! Going for the Dragon's Descent. No slow to come out for Ackerman. Eats the culling. Gets an ult out. Ult for an ult. Not too bad there. One step behind. Really for LMQ there. They were trying to roam again. through the jungle. They were a little bit late. But once again, they roamed right through a Dignitas ward. Dignitas' ward control has been absolutely immaculate. They buy more wards than any other team. Crumbs buys more wards than any other jungler. And they are using them for great aggressive plays around the map this match. Right now, taking a breath. Really great lead for Dignitas coming in. Baron still on the map, though. No history for peace itself. This could be a longer game, but at 18 minutes, Dignitas is looking to close the door on LMQ and tie up that first place. Slow. Uh oh. A little bit of yeah. a bushwhack, possibly. LMQ. This is more trying to find a fight. More. Always the one in the front. I was just saying, if when he's on Morgana or Thresh, like he's yeah. going to lull you into a false sense of security. I'm out of position. Oh, I grabbed a minion. Come get me. Yeah. There's my team. And as you can see, the thing that prevented that more so than the flash was the ward around LMQ's buff. They just managed to sweep that one out, and Dignitas actually, for the first time uh, in this game, doesn't have many deep wards. There's only kind of one ward uh, in enemy territory if you look at the map right now. I think LMQ might even need to invest in more sweepers, which is one of the most difficult things to do when you're behind in the game, because you need vision yourself when you're trying to get caught out. But with the way LMQ plays Riv, they need to go for so many aggressive plays, especially with the Leona Twitch. They need to be able to sneak up on people, and they can't do that if right. Dignitas keeps spamming wards across the map like they are now. It's like Dignitas, look at their inventory right now from anywhere. It's like they have a rule that if there is a blank square, you gotta fill it with a ward. Yeah. That's absolutely what they're doing. Do you have six gold. items in your inventory? Yeah. All right. Put wards there. Put wards there. If you got the gold, put some more in. It's going to be useful. 31.1 thousand to just about 26. So Dignitas hasn't been able to stretch the gold lead for a little bit of time now. Or take down this mid turret, which would really help to open up the map against LMQ. Something they still know how to control is their map. Let's see if they can keep that. Yeah. Well, Zion Spartan has his teleport up. I mean, Cutie Pie is nowhere to be found, though. He's trying to clear this away. 5v1 in the mid lane, and LMQ gets taken really low. 
Wow. The longer Dignitas can prevent these recalls, the more turrets LMQ is going to lose. Ackerman probably going to make it back here, though, but Dignitas is trying to pressure the side lane. This is LMQ really being put into a sticky situation. You got Cutie Pie pushing the turret in the top lane still. It's going to be Crumbs coming over to help him. And like you said, LMQ was backing, but now they're not. That turret will be lost. They get a kill on the Kiwi Kid, who's already died three times, not giving up oh, much Basili. gold. Vasily looking quite scared. Wow, this is that a is pink, pink ward. Oh, oh no. he finds it. Very nicely done. Shifter coming up with kills for himself. Vasily with an error on that one. And seven to three as Dignitas gets a huge leap there. The last bounce of the bomb. And now everyone on LMQ is low. They didn't even get that mid turret. And Dignitas can shove down this mid lane. Stun lands. Oh, the bomb coming out. Hiding next to a wall is so dangerous, especially when you're trying to dodge skill shots. It just makes it easier for the other person to hit, as you can see. 30 seconds on Dragon. I think Dig's even strong enough to stay for this. They not even want to. Yeah, just more itemization edges is all they're going for. Fantastic. Wow. CS on shifter. 240 at 21 minutes. Uh, not even 21 minutes. Yeah. Is quite huge. Oh, can't steal away the big wraith, but it's on Spartan still. For what we thought was going to happen in the mid lane, yeah. it's the complete opposite. Yeah, you can tell that was an absolute focus of Dignitas, mainly from even champion select, picking Ziggs, just knowing uh, he needed to be able to clear the waves as quickly as possible to try and offset that LMQ aggression. Yep. Another dragon coming in for Dig. Ackerman with a canceled TP in that last engagement, so he will not be able to join the team from afar. He's going to be hugging hips right now with more, and the fog of war is their friend. They got a pink ward in the brush, and they're looking for straight initiations whenever they can get it. They're going back into royal mode, if you will. Yeah. If they can. Oh no, LMQ actually sweeps, but doesn't go all the way in for the pink ward. A missed opportunity there to get rid of another Dignitas vision spot. There's nowhere else you can go that's not really seen. Finally, they go back to get the pink ward. Dignitas is going to probably want to control this barren area, as dangerous as that may seem for a Dignitas team. But 8,000 gold up, yeah. much stronger. You gotta right. be careful not to get caught in against a Twitch ult because we know Twitch plus Shivana and Lulu can be incredibly potent at the Baron area. But the time is now for Dignitas. Toss. This is the natural progression of achieving victory. Ackerman trying to throw the Ruby Crystals together for HP in his build. Just finishes up the Merc Treads. So he's going for a lot of defense in what we saw the offensive blade of the Rune King Shivana earlier today. Zion Spartan outside of a silly level 12, level 12. What's he going to get? That's going to be painful. There's a shot. He's going to go invis. That's going to be a few more hits. Won't see much, but this is Vasily being backed off. LMQ is never ready to fight with their own, with fight with yeah. the team, rather. I mean, now Dignitas has vision control around the Baron pit. If LMQ wants to go in there, basically checking blind. And Dignitas knows that for at least the next while, Vasily can't be there while Zion's teleport is up. They catch him. Bing, bang, boom. Down goes Xiao Wei Xiao. Down goes more as he tries to get into the fight. No Name knows that is not something he wants to toy with. The slow goes down. The attack is coming in. He's only got so long to get out of this one, and it's actually going to cost him the Summoner Flash. Huge place yeah. by Dignitas and control over Baron Pit. I mean, it's absolute vision control. LMQ is going to continue to pile into this. Because this is the what, what they do. They keep trying until there's absolutely nothing left. Look for Ackerman to try and go in on this. Smite is there. Ackerman could get the fight. No! Crumbs coming up very nicely on the Smite. Ackerman doing what he can. A great heal coming out there from Shifter on the Summoner spell. And it's going to be a big change. Oh, wow! Oh, he knocks it down! Over the head of Crumbs playing Monkey in the middle. Able to take down Ackerman. Shifter's had a couple of those last bounce of the bouncing bomb for the kills. Ackerman thought he'd gotten out free after that <laughs> valiant attempt. But in the end, he just gives more power to Dignitas' mid lane. Shifter making fantasy teams happy around the world. 4-0-1 now as he has his Rabadons already suited up. 24 minutes into the game, two items with a blasting wand to finish boots. Dignitas is on a rampage right now. Yeah, taking another look at this one, you can see Zion Spartans distracting as much as possible while this is going on. on. And they can't hide anywhere. All the brushes aren't brushes anymore as long as there's Dignitas <laughs> wards inside of them. That was just another kill in the scatter that LMQ tried to do around the Baron pit. It's like a light bright in the bottom half of the jungle. Look at all the red wards. Also, pink wards on the Baron. These guys are ready. And Crumbs is breaking his own rule. He's got an empty spot. Maybe he just hasn't been back to buy another ward. 
Looks like cleanup on the red buff. This is going to go to Ackerman so he can stay on the stick. Oh, no, here comes Vasily. That's what I thought. Yeah, Vasily's still not even completed the second item, whereas I'm a cutie pie is about 800 gold away from mm -hmm. finishing his last Whisper. Uh, complete disparity across the board. That's what happens when you have a 13,000 gold disadvantage. LMQ has not yeah. been beaten like this. No, it's, that's what I was just going to say. It's our first time really seeing LMQ kind of struggle and find what to do. Yeah. Different well, gameplay. A lot of, not a lot of this, but this is what teams kind of talked about in scrims. They said, yeah, we beat LMQ in scrims. This happens. We'll win the laning phase. But nobody's really been able to produce that result until now. It looks like LMQ can be taken down eventually. Yeah. We still got time in this game. A huge lead from Dig. It looks like they could solidify this one within the next 10. Yeah, and this is this is what can happen oftentimes in League of Legends, especially with the way LMQ opened this game. Uh, they got hit really quick by Dig and Toss. And Dig and Toss never relented their pressure. From the very first blood, they gained ward control. They never let LMQ have the lanes they wanted to have. And every time LMQ made a move, wow. Toss made a better one. Oh my gosh, across the board, two practically bleeding members of LMQ heading for the fountain. Zion Spartan's just going to join middle. He does not have to split push. Comes in. The inhibitor goes down a minute and 15 on Dragon. They should be back and forth if they don't just go for bottom. Yeah, they got a big minion wave in the bottom lane that Ackerman's trying to get rid of, but will he actually get caught on himself? Stun misses. Close and Dignitas plays safe. Smartly done. Siege wave coming in. This should give Cutie Pie a few shots with that Sheen on the turret. Actually, does not even. Oh, he does. I was looking at Twitch. With the Sheen proc on the turret. Oh, the Solar Flare hitting three. That's going to be a big Ziggs bomb. And the Strangle Thorn coming up. Very nicely done. And it looks like they are once again pushing LMQ off the inhibitor turret. Textbook dig push. Yeah, Ding and Toss is completely unstoppable at this point, And it is to LMQ style. Wow. But they would try and find a fight there because. Yeah. They are not the team to just watch you beat them. They will always try and go in. And this time, they're just too far behind. That fight had very low chance of work. Dignitas going around the horn on this one. Zion Spartan already split pushing in the top lane. And some a uh, great pickup as well for him on the team. Dignitas loves to be a split push team, whether it's 1-3-1 one, one, or just straight to your base in a 1-2. They're going to do it this way. 27 minutes, they're in, and they've just cleaned out yep. the inhibitors. Once you get three inhibitors, it's pretty much a GG. Yeah. 27 minutes in, especially when Dignitas is only missing one outer turret. Right. This is about as complete of a victory uh, that you can achieve. And they've done it over LMQ, who was the first place 4-0 team in the North American LCS. The only remaining LCS team that was still undefeated. Uh, but not for long, because Dignitas has really made a statement in this one. Oh, yeah. Zion Spartan with the red elixir by. That is the close-out purchase. They are looking to make one last fight. Be the ender. They're going to have Crumbs go back. He'll put some more wards in. Zion Spartan even bought another pink ward. This far and this ahead in the game, they still feel that controlling any part of the map is yeah. prime. They're they making to. sure that there's no possible situation that Vasily could sneak up behind them yeah. on Twitch. Absolutely. Even though if he did, it with the 18,000 <laughs> gold advantage, I don't think he would do much. Needs that Infinity Edge, if anything. Right now, he's already working against armor. Mikhail's Crucible coming in for Crumbs, cause, I think just because he wanted to, because yeah. he could. And then Morel and Namacon for Kiwi Kid. I'm actually a little surprised that Crumbs doesn't just build Sightstone as a normal item on his junglers Loving because ward. of the sheer volume of wards he buys. I imagine it's just because he doesn't want to sink that cost at the start of the game. You know, it's okay to build cheap wards yeah. two times every time you go back to base, and he can't, like, gradually build into that Sightstone. But if he ever got a few kills, I, early on in the game, I wouldn't be too surprised if he didn't put it immediately into a Sightstone just to maintain the vision control he yeah. holds so dear. This should be the final push. Two double super minion waves in every lane and right. a 18,000 gold. Double Triforce as well. These turrets are not going to have a fun time. One goes down and it was really just super minions. More low. LMQ dives in. This is what they know to do, but it's not working out with the same result. That's Vasily almost going down. The Wild Grow safe. They take him down to the fountain. What a game from Dignitas. 29 minutes on the clock, and they'll share first place with LMQ. Yeah, that one's got to feel pretty good for Dignitas. Wow. They beat LMQ in under 30 minutes. LMQ know, is known to play fast, uh, but that is usually in victory, not so much in defeat. And. Dignitas kind of redeems themselves after letting themselves slip at the end of last week's Super Week.
Hugs come in for Vasily. Yeah. He has a lot of solo queue experience against all these Dignitas guys. Shaoi Shao as well. Yeah, the hug between the mid laners, our second featured matchup of the day. We kind of put Shifter on the box and said he yeah. does not CS well against his opponents. Xiao Wei Xiao does. 42 CS up on Xiao Wei Xiao at the end of the game. Yeah, and there's actually not that many critics for Shifter, uh, but if there are some, he kind of answered them in that game with that CS performance, showing that. Uh,